Hello everybody, my name is Windback. Happy to see you all back with your bright, smiling faces full of cheer and absolutely no malicious intent while you hover over that comment section. Today we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday with the Ritualist build and start into the later stages of the game. We are in the YouTube dimension though, so do leave a comment, a like, or consider the plunge of the subscribe lever. Have you had enough time to consider? Or should I come back in a few minutes? Would you like to speak to the chef? The Ritualist build we have right now is focusing on pets as our main source of damage and survivability. If you didn't watch the last video, go do that because I'm not going to go over much of the stuff that I did in that one in this video. This one's going to be all about the later game gear, devotions, and filling in the gaps of our build with other skills. So at level 50 in Grim Dawn, your options for gear will start getting a little bit harder to decide because... The monster infrequence, legendary items, and empowered versions of your previous epic items are all going to contend for a single slot. In order to keep this short but still very subjective to my experience, I'll point you to the items that I have at level 70, which are, well, some are really important, while others are just placeholders until something better comes along. I was able to find empowered versions of number one, the dead beater, and number two, the Spirit Eater Bulwark. Like I mentioned in the last video, these items are staples, but their empowered versions work way better. So the empowered DB is not only giving more vitality damage and vitality conversion, it's also adding two points to Undead Legion now as well. Skeletons and Legion are both mega important for this build, so getting four free points makes me... Yeah! We're also getting that much needed pet vitality damage for our boys so that is massively helpful because of the dead beater but the spirit eater is actually going to be really helpful for a new skill that i picked up post 50. spirit eater has also got some vitality damage and converting vitality as well so the stats synergize really really well with the dead beater more than that though we're getting points into wendigo totem wendigo totem is new for this build and is actually really strong and you might have already noticed it because it's healing the lads near it in an AoE every 0.5 seconds. This ability does damage too, but that's really just a cherry on top. So it's going to heal us in an AoE, and since we have tons of pets that always need health in an AoE as well, it's incredibly useful. So, Spirit Eater gives us points into Wendigo Totem, as well as increasing the damage that Wendigo Totem does because it's vitality. Good stuff all around. Now there is an item set that I was really hoping I'd stumble across in the non-mythical variety because I do have the mythical set already pulled out, but it turns out I only had about one-third of the luck that I needed. The Corruptor of Spirit set is the one set that would really bring this build out of puberty and into adulthood. The set itself is going to add crit and offensive ability to our pets with only two of the items, and once we get all three, there's a 10% chance on attack, which we do a lot of attacking, to get 6% health back, vitality damage for us and our pets, then even more staggering amounts of damage and crit for our pets. Now the only piece I have currently puts three points into Soul Harvest, which is the shoulders, but once the set is complete, we're getting three to Bone Harvest and three to Conjure Primal Spirit. Those points are only from the set bonus and not even taking into account the point boosts from the hat and the robes. So for reference, the Corruptor's Mask gives two skeletons, three to Soul Harvest, and plus two to Briarthorn. That's the mythical version. If you've been paying attention so far, those are really big parts of the build. The next skill that we took after hitting level 50, though, is the Conjure Primal Spirit. I don't love it because it doesn't live forever but when it is summoned it is really really helpful for backing up the rest of our guys and dealing damage like we do in terms of our other gear options there are a couple 50 well level 50 legendary items that aren't super hard to come by while you're still in normal and in fact you can get lucky and get these as quest reward items for killing the log horian or the master of flesh in melmoth the first is our gloves. That is going to be the Touch of the Ever-Living Grove. And these gloves are mostly defensive, but the bonuses will 
give you and your pets a uh, couple of stats to keep you nice and tanky. There's also a chance on attack to heal your character. So any amount of healing that you can do, since you're going to be front lighting for a lot of your pets, is really important. The next item is going to be our Fiend Flesh Greaves. Again, these are pretty defensive stats for us, but this time they'll be buffing our pets in all damage, total speed, and reducing their stun duration. So these boots are going to be uh, defensive for your character and offensive for your pets. There is also a chance to activate a huge shield that would couple really nicely with a Lich Guard. Now when it comes to our rings and amulets, I didn't have much luck finding anything beyond my monster infrequent for amulets, but the good news is the vendor that we bought it from in the first place will sell me, or you, its level 70 equivalent eventually. So with enough levels you've picked up, you can just go right back to that vendor and get yourself a super easy upgrade. Rings are mostly the same story. I'm still rocking an empowered marrow band with a life giver signet. Uh, neither is giving me amazing stats, but both are passable for what I really need. Realistically, up until you make it to about 75, you can get away with gear that's simply buffing your skills or your damage types, but after that point and starting to make your way into Elite and Ultimate, you're going to want to find big gear that checks all of your boxes rather than just a couple of them. In the case of this class, the gear should give vitality damage or conversion, pet vitality damage, health, and as always, resistances for you and your pets. Some notable higher level gear would be things like our uh, Sovereign Ruby of Domination, uh, Wild Shorn Leg Guards, and Mark of Bloody Ends. All of those have really good stats for our build, but they don't have all of the stats that we need. Now, instead of focusing on more theoretical gear, we're going to make our way over to the Devotion Tree. For Devotions, there are two that we want on the Outer Edge, who are both extremely strong for healing and buffing our pets. Tree of Life and Ishtok the Spring Maiden both use yellow and blue Devotion Points, so getting both is super easy. They are also providing lots of resistances and health bonuses to our pets, so the synergy between the two Devotions is really just outstanding. As far as the abilities themselves, Tree of Life has a 25% chance to activate a massive AoE heal that also increases health regen and energy regen. And since our boys are often all over the place, we need a big radius to make sure that we can grab them all for the healing. Ishtok will also have a 25% chance when hit to give you yourself damage absorption and your pets a big spike in physical damage, offensive ability, and defensive ability. It's also going to cause your pets to taunt the targets near them. So basically, these two devotions are going to help swap a lot of aggro and heal any damage that gets taken during these big aggro changes. Skeletons die a lot less than normal, while the Blight Fiend and the Briarthorn are almost completely invincible. There are three more devotions that are going to be pretty important on the mid-tier of things, and those are the Staff of Ratosh, Ulo, the Keeper of the Waters, and the Scales of Alchema. Now, Staff and uh, Ulo, you will complete totally, but Scales, we only want to finish halfway, and that's just to get the ability. Staff of Ratosh is pet bonuses with resistances and big buffs to all their damage, while Ulo is providing resistances and a cleanse for you and your buddy. All of your buddies, actually. Ulo also removes buffs from bad guys who are unlucky enough to be around when it activates. And lastly, there is the Tip the Scales, which has a 33% chance to activate when hit and will deal vitality and energy leech damage to whoever procs it on you. Uh, this damage is almost entirely converted to health as well, so considering it is a one-second cooldown and has a pretty good chance to activate, this one's going to be pretty fantastic for keeping you tanky when you're getting hit by random stuff. Now the tier 1 devotions are mostly ones with pet bonus actives, but there are a couple used purely to branch out correctly for the Tree of Life and Ishtok. Uh, namely, Tsunami and Viper are used just to get to the staff and further up the blue tree, while Lion, Hound, and Panther all provide pet bonuses and a big number in both the blue and yellow trees. 
Lastly, there is the Lizard and the Dryad, with Dryad giving a heal on attack every 5-ish seconds or so. And if your numbers aren't adding up correctly, you may want to start pulling some out of uh, earlier constellations, like your starting constellations, because this one is... I think it's right about exactly how it needs to be. Uh, I think with one extra points still in the early red starter constellation. But that is it for the Ritualist Pet Build Guide, everybody. Once you reach 75 or so, the decisions are going to be up to you, and grinding out the gear and game is in your hands. I might come back to this class once I make it up to level 100 as a kind of where are they now type deal of video. But let me know if that sounds appealing. I've actually got a lot more of these build videos lined up and classes to try out, so stay tuned for more, but I will see you there. Peace out, everybody.